I'm just looking at the docket here. It's saying GPU open tech presentations with Alex. Sure. So, so Alex, something's going on in AMD land. Tell us what's Alex. going on there. Yeah, I think AMD's background graphics research has been really great the last couple of years. They've, through GP Open, released a number of things that I thought were very interesting. There was the um, kind of, I forget they call it, it's like their open RTGI solution, uh, right. which has similarities to Lumen, but it's also different. It uses hardware ray tracing, though, like on like base Lumen and you know a couple other presentations but these most recent ones they put out there was two from a grouping of four from gpu open that i thought was in they were interesting the first one is hp lock super fast high quality bvh construction and the second one is a dgf a dense hardware friendly geometry format for loss lossily compressing meshlets with arbitrary topologies now those sound like a big group of s silly words in a row but the first one uh this hp lock thing it's trying to solve these both trying to solve kind of open issues uh to a certain degree or come up with new solutions approaches to open issues and just hardware ray tracing and the first one about hp lock high quality bvh construction is that right now uh amd the consoles, NVIDIA, Intel, the BVH structure, which is this kind of grouping of boxes that is read by your GPU that's filled with geometry. Each of these boxes are filled with geometry. Well, it's generated usually on the GPU in real time with the game. Consoles can also load an offline version of it, but that's not relevant for this. And the whole thing is when you construct this BVH, you can do it really quickly and loosely, I would describe it. And the quality of that BVH could be low, but it was constructed in a fast manner. So that means it was, you saved a lot of time and processing power making that. But when you trace through this BVH structure, since it was made loosely and poorly, uh, the tracing times can explode and they can get really long. Uh, so there's this weird balance right now. And currently Intel, AMD and Nvidia do not have any sort of hardware in their GPU, which is doing the construction of the BVH. It's all done through some sort of form of just general compute. And the idea here from AMD is to make a new way of generating BVHs on the GPU that is slightly slower in some circumstances, but increases the or the efficiency of trace time. And I think this is cool because this could allow for greater construction of BVHs on GPUs. And since this research came out, it opens the eyes of other makers, like the other IHVs, like Intel and NVIDIA. And in the future, you know, future driver versions or future versions of hardware that come out from all of these companies as influenced by this paper, we could have much faster tracing and better quality BVHs on our GPUs. I thought that was really cool. Uh, the, th the second presentation DGF, a dense hardware friendly geometry format. This one is almost like a response to the existence of Unreal Engine 5. And Unreal Engine 5 in general, like it poses challenges to hardware ray tracing because the whole idea in the past, right, you know, around the time when DirectX ray tracing was codified was that you would have distinct levels of detail in a video game. You know, you get close to an object, it's the highest quality geom geometric mesh. And then as you move away, lower quality ones are used depending upon the distance. And these kind of like static representations of geometry being loaded into memory and being always accessible was a thing that DXR relies upon, like a preconceived notion to actually do fast ray tracing and this doesn't exist at all in nanite really the the geometry is generated a completely different way through compute foregoing the hardware rasterization stage primarily and the geometric geometric density is changing in every single frame potentially as the camera moves so what do you do about that the way Nanite and Unreal Engine 5 currently solve that is either software tracing, which is low quality or higher quality hardware ray tracing, but it still doesn't use the exact same quality level of geometry as what you can see with your eyes in the game. The ray tracing is being traced, it's tracing against much lower quality geometry there. And this causes issues because things like shadows and lighting will not necessarily align 
with that high quality nanite geometry. And, uh, well, there's another separate thing here, but the performance is not always going to be good, um, depending upon how many instances are used. And here, this DGF thing, it's a way to represent the geometry in hardware, a compression format, which allows it to be more easily used with a system like Nanite. So it can actually can it can actually deal with continuous level of detail, which Nanite has. Uh, their proposal is kind of a competing proposal to NVIDIA's DMM, uh, Displacement Micro Meshes, I think that's what it's called. And these two technologies, one offered by NVIDIA and one offered by AMD, they're actually compared in the paper and there's some advantages for each of them. Uh, which are very technical but the whole point is that i'm very happy to see amd looking for solutions to solve the current issue which is how do we ray trace against really high quality geometry and their proposal i think it seems doable if it were added as in hardware support from the amd side of things in fact i would almost expect it at this point the fact that they brought out this research and showing it to the world instead of just keeping it to themselves uh, but I'm very curious to what this means then for DirectX in the future, as well as what NVIDIA has with DMM. There was a chain of tweets after this uh, paper came out from Brian Karras from Unreal Engine Epic, uh, who is kind of like the largest personality behind Nanite. And he was saying that he's very happy to see this research come out, but it still doesn't solve all issues. And also he's a little bit curious about what this means for the future because you really don't want to have competing separate proprietary standards for how geometry is compressed on a GPU, like one from NVIDIA, one from AMD, because that would mean doubling the size of uh, the installs of a game. It, it leads to like combinatorial explosions of like memory and things like that. You know, there's there's just like a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to have that. And I think this is a, once again, a great instance where Microsoft should probably step forward in the next year and a half or two and really start codifying the next version of DirectX ray tracing, which we have yet to see. So right now, I thought these papers were really exciting because they show the potential future of where DirectX ray tracing is going to go and AMD's proposals for them. And I'm very happy to see AMD taking ray tracing seriously. It's taken a while, but this stuff is gold, I think. My question to you, Alex, is, I mean, the, the nature of GPU open is that it's open, right. right? So is this something that should work on all GPU architectures? Or the, is it yeah. a reaction to an upcoming architecture that AMD <laughs> is, is doing, laying the groundwork, so to speak? Well, I think it's both, uh, because the, the things that they put forward here didn't have any hardware requirement. Um, they were all done via compute for the most part. And they, at the end of the DGF paper, they mention that right now this is unfeasible from a performance standpoint due to lack of hardware support. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, which is, you know, I think that's reasonable. A lot right. of things are shown first in yeah. software. And they say then this is like, but if it had hardware support, it would be faster and it would make it much more worthwhile. It doesn't solve all okay. the issues, but I think this is them putting it out in the open so developers get used to it. And then we'll see. I also think, you know, direct storage may follow a similar path where it, you know, G-Deflate standard comes out, it exists with GPU decompression, but I think there's going to be hardware support for hardware decompression at some point in the future on NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel GPUs. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, we know the Switch has got hardware decompression. Right. Block, the, the Switch too. So I'm curious if that's kind of an offshoot of that or something custom. You just don't really know. Do you? We don't know. I don't know at this time mm. but it makes sense right because there's something you know direct storage doesn't seem to have quite hit the target so to speak right now no i don't think it has either other than the cpu decompression decompression i think gpu decompression is kind of disappointing actually mm. okay mm -hmm. it's interesting that you know when epic produces a new technology there's a like a flashy tech demo to uh to accompany it but here you, they can't really <laughs> do that can they it's, it's much more sort of theoretical yeah uh, <laughs> there was, um, I mean, there were some visualizations and things like that, but they are yep. not anywhere near like Valley of the Ancients or something like that, you know, like where mm -hmm. you go, wow, this is this is so technical. But I, I, I'm super happy to see AMD taking ray tracing like so seriously as they are right now. 
there's clearly a lot of research going into it and it kind of has to happen really the direction of travel now is kind of undeniable mm-hmm. yeah yeah it is it just takes me back sorry i'm, I'm gonna do it do again it. like you know when turing came out the the pushback against ray tracing was just kind of astonishing and uh you know we're at the point now where it is basically an established standard and developers always wanted to embrace new shiny things and uh here we are it's just kind of happened right mm -hmm. yeah no one i i think especially with the next generation of gpus it's going to be really kind of an afterthought i think in terms of like what the consumer needs to worry about i think they're going to both be very good at ray tracing all of them and it's going to start just becoming something that people just assume it's there and it's included in performance reviews not as like a special section and i think we're slowly approaching that and it's going to be I think, there, so. yeah i mean obviously we're thinking about our next gen gpu reviews on a whole number of levels at the moment and um yeah i think the differentiation between rt on and off is uh, you know it's i think we should be making the differentiation into something a bit more plausible such as uh, ultra right. versus optimized i think that's probably better i agree with that um, i think you know basically having rt on and off is, is is just not a great place to be because um it's kind of like how can i say it we've got direct x12 now direct x12 ultimate rt is a standard now developers are, are actually targeting the features now and to just ignore them it's, it's just folly, in my opinion. Okay. Even to the point where, you know, Valve are adding RT support to Steam Deck. Right. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's there, it's happening, it's, it's done, it's a done deal. Live with it. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts, John? No, I actually wasn't paying attention to that because uh, I'm seeing all this news popping off about worldwide uh crashes like windows going oh yeah everywhere thanks to crowdstrike <laughs> i'm trying this. to understand what the heck's happening because apparently like airports around the world are all shutting down businesses can't run everything's everybody's wow. just blue screening it's like blue screens everywhere yeah i, I read they, there was uh, an update pushed to crowdstrike as it's called which is causing worldwide blue screens so okay. like they seem to have screwed something up real bad and it's causing major major issues this just it's in not, uh, so that so sorry i was like completely just like freaking out about that because it's like uh with there's yeah there's some flights happening soon where i'm like wait this is gonna, <laughs> what's gonna happen here so uh i was just expecting there to be some sort of association with 13th and 14th gen core processors <laughs> not oh, there too snap <laughs> I mean, uh, as far as You'll I know, right, though, you got a twelve nine hundred K. You'll be fine, don't worry. Okay, that's good. Yeah, but uh, Rich, with your stability with thirteen nine hundred K, sorry, just really tangential. Was it blue screens or was it just application instability? Uh, both. Both. Okay. Blue screens and and it was often the NVIDIA driver popping up within Premier, amazingly. And then there would just be application um, terminations. It would just Oh, that's awful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, especially when you're getting to the end of an export flight, you know, a 30-minute 4K project in Premiere, <laughs> it just disappears. <laughs> awful it's, stuff. It's like, it's, it's like, it's mind games. It's like, did I, did I begin that export? I left, surely I began that export half an hour ago. Yeah, you just look and you don't see any progress and then on you, it. Then you come, back, you come back to the screen, it's like the desktop. <laughs> or it's or worse still your computer has restarted and you've got like the windows uh you know the the, the, the windows screen. splash screen yeah <laughs>